So I, I mentioned this earlier that if you're thinking you know the answer, you may want to ask for a clarifying question or say, are you making reference to and then talk about what you do know. But then you can also say, I'm not quite sure how to respond, but as a member of your team, I would, and what would you do? Research. Research is, is still general. Get resources. I would ask the counselor for assistance on where I could go externally to help provide additional resources for parents in need of assistance. Or I would go talk to my mentor, knowing who you would go to. If they ask a question about exhibiting difficulty with, with uh, certain areas in reading, well, I may go and visit with my um, uh, librarian to make sure, knowing who to go to. I would contact a, um, a, a a district level uh, representative, we call them program directors, that specialize in different content areas to provide support on how I could address these needs. So, do you have to know everything? We don't expect anyone to know everything. But you have to know who to go to to get an answer. Okay? That's the best answer you can get. Okay, so remain focused, and I talked to you a little bit about what, 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 what helps us get focused as we're trying to respond to answers. Don't go on and on and on and on, because using their time, we've had interviewers that come in, and we're able to ask one question. And the talking hasn't stopped, so we don't get a, a good global view of what they have to offer, because they've only given me an opportunity to ask one question. Okay? So think about that. And then what do you do after an interview? What are you going to do after an interview? Thank you. Follow up. Follow up. Thank you, letters. You know, I may be a little um, old, but I appreciate a personal gesture. Okay, when you handwrite something, because I'm going to tell you that as that comes in, what I do is I staple that to my resume, to the resume or the application, and it sits on my desk. Okay. Now I've also had emails. Which are, which are nice too, but the impact is a little greater when it comes on a personal level. And you may just like to do that with, with a limited number. Campuses that you really, really are, like and that you really strongly want to be considered for. So those are some other things to think about. Now, we always have to end with a what if. So, what if I don't pass all my tests? What if I'm not offered an extended position? What if fall comes and I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing? Okay? Here are some options for you to consider because it's important to be visible. Okay? You need to remain current. So what is, what are, what's changing? Our profession, it, it, it evolves from one thing to the next and it's, it's a continuous cycle that doesn't end. So you need to make sure that you're current so that as you continue to interview, you are able to articulate, you know, how, what is the, 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 the research saying? What is it that we're doing for our focus is as a, as, a, as, a, as a profession? Stay involved. That is huge. You need to be involved now. We tell all of our student teachers that you need to be, you are your, your supervising teacher's shadow. So if they have duty in the morning, then you are there at, at duty with them. If they have, um, uh, PTO meetings in the evening, then where are you? At the PTO meetings, okay? If they have a conference with a parent, you are sitting there. If they decide that they're going to stay late to organize their room for the next day, then where are you going to be? In the room right there with them. You are their shadow. Now, what will make a huge difference is what you do beyond that, okay? So, you think of that in terms of minimal expectations, okay? Because a lot of people do that. Almost everyone that, I, that I've been encountered do that. So what are you going to do that takes you above that? How are they, because it will be remembered, okay? And as physicians begin to, to, to surface, then they're going to remember your extra things that you do. So does your campus need extra help during tutorials? Does your campus need a person to come in um, and help monitor between the after school and moving into um, to those after school sessions? Does, does your school need someone to come in on Saturdays to help 
And when I say that, you are volunteering your services, especially now when there is such a financial concern with, with the direction of our profession. Those things, you volunteering your time to do those things, will really be, it will be recognized, and they will not forget it when something comes up. Okay, so how, what's going to set you aside from the person sitting next to you? The student, the other student teacher from another university that's at the same school. It's what you do that's extra that's going to help you uh, as you're looking for positions. Tutor, volunteer. Now, if you have to, then you go in. Stay in the um, school setting. Become a parent educator. I'm going to be in there. I may not have assumed a position, but you know what? I am loyal to this profession loyal to our profession, and I'm going to be helping students with my ultimate goal, assuming a, a teaching position, okay? And um, diversify your areas of certification so that someone that has a, an, EC, uh, an EC6 generalist position, you may have more flexibility with those that have EC, uh, that have the ESL component or that they add you have to think about what your comfort zone would be, and if you're qualified to teach multiple areas or multiple um, grade levels, then that could help you because it provides the principals with more flexibility if there are um, if there are changes within the campus dynamics. I think that's it. What do y'all think?